Well, hello, everyone. I like to talk a little bit about six years of IPv6 in Paris. Um, how many of you have been to one of the IPv6 World Congresses over the past five years? Okay, about half of you. I guess everybody else from the MPLS World Congress, or I mean, there's a few of you who came back from uh, your, your coffee break. Hopefully they'll be coming in here over the next few minutes. Um, so let's, let's begin. How many of you were at this conference in 2010? Okay, we've got a few of them. So at that conference, there was no IPv6. Um, and I met this guy named Remy, uh, how do you pronounce his last name? Dupré. No, Scanvius, our, our guy, our, the, the upper oh. side guy. Scavenus. Scavenus. I've never pronounced his last name. You guys know Remy? He runs the, the program, the conference, anyhow, here at Upper Side. And he was supposed to be in this room so I could make fun of him. That's why I'm delaying. At any minute, he's going to come in here. Anyhow, I went up to him and I said, hey, you should do an IPv6 conference. And he said, well, I uh, did the IPv6 conference uh, 10 years ago in 1999, and nobody came. Uh, nothing came of it. So. <laughs> Merci. <laughs> and so I said, but, you know, the time has come. And that's one thing about Remy. Be careful what you say this year, because he's going to use it next year. And that's coming up. So. He was like, well, why has the time come? And I said, well, IPv6 is going to get deployed. See, look at the data. We're at 0.10% for the past six months with no growth. That's where we were in February 2010 at the middle of that conference. I was like, but trust me, it's going to happen. The time has come. So we created a conference, and he titled it, The Time Has Come. And we had a great time. Uh, the, there's a couple of people in the room that you'll see on stage in a few minutes. Um, and, and honestly, I think they're like a fine wine. They aged very well. Um, here, I don't know, John Brzezowski, he looks like he's going to come across and just like, if you don't deploy V6, I'm going to kill you. Um, and I swear, Martin looks 20 years older than he does now there. And the guys on stage in the middle, this really put this conference on the map. We dug Steve Deering out of retirement, got him on stage right here with a couple of the other, you know, Bob Hendon and Eric Nordmark, these, you know, old founders of IPv6, with three guys 20 years younger working for companies, with the exception of Comcast, companies that did not even exist when the IPv6 specification was written by the other guys. And if you look closely there, there's Lorenzo Caliti from Google looking none too happy with Steve Deering, probably asking him something about you know, neighbor discovery and DHCPv6, I don't know. But it was a really interesting event to see this generational gap, the people who designed it and the people who were deploying it. And from that point on, we really had a lot of fun. The next conference, you know, at 2011 conference, I, I talked to him, I said, you know, we're going to do this big launch thing. It's going to be huge. So the next conference was open the flood floodgates, and it was huge. So the next conference, it was like back in 2012, I was saying, you know, the next big thing is going to be mobile. Verizon's going to do great stuff. T-Mobile's going to do great stuff, and they did, and we had a mobile conference. And then after that, he was like, well, what's coming up next? Are we going to do another one? And we're like, I don't know, maybe. Well, he said, well, what's next after mobile? And I said, well, everything. We're going to put IPv6 addresses on everything. And sure enough, we got IP on everything, which makes you think of this. <laughs> I'm sure that he really didn't mean IP on everything. But uh, so I'll get rid of that. The next one was unleashing the power. And after that, five years, we just couldn't do an, a, a sixth one. So now we have this you know, sort of mini version right here. Now, one of the things I said was, all right, we can have a mini version, but you're going to put me in the big room with MPLS, right? 
And he said, yeah. But MPLS moved down here. <laughs> so we're back to where we were, and the MPLS people are all having coffee. So you're going to have to go back and tell them about what we're doing here. Anyhow, during all that time, look what we did. We rose, uh, uh, we went two orders of magnitude from 0.1% all the way up to more than 10%. This conference became you know, the, the, the industry point each year for something new happening, whether it was Facebook talking about their V6-only data center, or again, the, the going mobile, T-Mobile, and Verizon and their big deployments, or Google doing this, or Cisco doing that, whatever it was, this conference was a showcase each year and really marked uh, what was going on in the industry. It was handy that it was right before the big June dates, right? So we could make announcements before we did stuff in June for the World Day and the World Launch. So that begins, brings us to this year. I kept getting calls from people, from you guys, saying, well, what about the next conference? What about the next conference? It's like, well, there is no next conference. And then I thought, well, you know, I've been working on this new research stuff. My job at Echo Polytechnique as well. We built a research lab here in Paris, uh, Cisco did. John Chambers came in and others with lots of money to invest in France. And we are hiring students and PhDs and all this kind of stuff. And I thought, well, you know, maybe we can put together a symposium of that kind of work and include IPv6 within it. And that's what we did the past couple of days. Some of you were there. Some of you were not. If you didn't hear about it, connect with me on LinkedIn. That's where I advertised it. Uh, what else was I going to do, right? So we did that. We had a great time. There's some of the students right here. Uh, if you want to know more about the agenda, you can click on that you know, fun little link and take a look. And you can even register for it still. And if you register for it now, maybe we'll have your information for the next one and can send you an invite if you'd like to come. Four of the things we talked about there were IPv6-centric networking, internet measurements, challenges in protocol evolution. So many of us working on IPv6 learned a lot about how hard it is to evolve a protocol on the internet. And I think those lessons are transferable. Uh, in particular, Martin said, I'm done with IPv6. I'm going to go over to uh, Cloudflare and work on new and interesting protocols. And you'll hear about that in this speech in just a moment. And another one, inform information-centric networking. Unless you were at the conference, who here has heard of information-centric networking, ICN? Got a few people in there. You were at the conference. <laughs> one or two. Well, that's one of the areas of research that we're uh, focusing on at the Paris Innovation and Research Lab, Pearl, at Cisco. It's a really, it's a, it's a new way to look at networking. And it allows us to think out of the box and really clean slate kind of think, okay, what's the next evolutionary step? This is a pretty hot topic in, in, in research arenas, but bringing it in with people who have just gotten done deploying IPv6, I thought could be very instructive uh, between these you know, two different groups. So in ICN, and of course there's more than one kind of ICN already, there's a CCN and an Indian, rather than IP being at the, at the waist, with everything on IP and IP on everything. Oh, there's that joke again. Rather than IP being at the waist, you actually have information at the, at, at, at the waist. So chunks of data and, that are digitally signed and can live anywhere. They could, I could get it from you know, that light bulb or anywhere. I don't care where it comes from. Therefore, I don't have IP addresses and I don't have endpoints anymore. It's the, the idea is that just as we went from circuits being the center of the network with the telephone industry and IP endpoints being the next focus for the internet as we know it today, when we go beyond, it's actually information connecting to information and we don't care about where that information lives. Which brings up a whole s slew of interesting problems and that's uh, one, of the, one of the major topics that we looked at. 
Now, one of the observations you might have, and if you were at, my, at this conference last year, you saw me talk about routing past the interface with IPv6. We, again, we tr traditionally think of IP connecting to a, a network interface on a, on, a, on a hardware platform, a host, if you will. That's why we call host routes, point to hosts, right? But when you step back and think of all the address space that we have, and you think about how containers, VMs, are now the things that we're addressing in uh, network function virtualization or you know, in, in large data centers, you start to realize that IP has gone past the interface. And I think this is at least as revolutionary, if not more so, than all the talk about IPv6 being needed for IoT. So it's pretty obvious to think 100 billion interfaces, got to have 100 billion IP addresses. Well, maybe or maybe not. But you have 200 billion containers and processes, and think of a container being so small that all it does is return a single piece of data. And you can start actually IP addressing data chunks in a content delivery network. We also talked about segment routing. Stefano was there. Uh, you heard about it this morning from John Letty and from Clarence. It's an important part of IPv6-centric networking. What we're trying to do is take a look at IPv6. What can it provide when it's, when it's unleashed from the bounds of IPv4? And what fundamental functions do we need to bring in at the IP layer without making it too complex, but at the same time giving it the power and simplicity that can allow these types of transformations. So when we think segment routing, and this whole day has been about segment routing, obviously we have a whole set of traffic engineering use cases. These work with IPv6 as well as they work with MPLS. Uh, Clarence made the announcement that you can go over to our booth, uh, Cisco booth, and get an IPv6 uh, segment routing demo running in hardware. I encourage you to go do that if you haven't done it already, and ask him you know, about parity between MPLS and IPv6, because uh, we've really been uh, making sure that that's it at the center of, the, uh, of, of this, uh, the architecture that allows v6 and MPLS. But you also hear about IPv6 or segment routing allowing you to route through services. And again, imagine your service is nothing but a little tiny piece of data, and you really get to the end of of this dive into the microcosm of putting IPv6 addresses everywhere. And as you climb up, you start to look up and go, oh, there's these ICN guys working on architectures with data at its center. Now IP is looking up and saying, OK, I can route to data. And there's an interesting intersection to study there. And this is one of the chief things that we're doing at our new lab here in Paris. We also talked a lot about internet measurements, and I talked about we, we love to measure IPv6, and that is important. It's one of the most important things when we began this journey six years ago is that we had Google, Eric, others that were posting public IPv6 measurements. And most recently, at the last V6 World Congress, this uh, slide was, this, this data was published for the first time by Facebook saying, hey guys, IPv6 is actually faster than IPv4. And there were a lot of questions. It was like, why? Is it just you? What's the deal? How, what's, what are all the reasons by that? And a bunch of people went off and studied their networks and their users. Here's one, uh, LinkedIn, uh, Zaid was uh, at the conference and they posted their own data that kind of matches it. It says 10 to 20% faster for their users on mobile devices uh, reaching LinkedIn. You missed it, Remy. Oh, well. <laughs> I'll go back. No, stay. <laughs> I'll go back. Uh, 10 to 20% faster than IPv4. Um, at, at the symposium, they were presenting that data, and you can ask uh, Frank about it on the panel in a few minutes. In addition, uh, Chip Popovichu, he has a company whose purpose in life, called Nefo6, is to put little agents around uh, the world, software inside clients, and do V6 monitoring, V4, V6 monitoring. And he released some of his data, which showed, with the exception of a couple of outliers, and in one case, they've actually fixed the, uh, the problem. 
V6, on average, 14% faster or 7% faster, depending if you're measuring from their global agents that are fixed or the endpoints uh, running software on the hosts. So there's a, a real performance improvement there five that we can mark. point to. I only have five minutes. <laughs> That's going to be hard. Let's say six. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks. Um, so where, how are we in terms of predicting the future here? George Michelson was there. He talked all, he made a, you know, a, a wonderful presentation on how they're doing their measurements at AP NIC. These are measurements from Eric Vinke and his website that predicts the future in the United States. Over 50%, up to 60% within a year if past performance yields future results. And we heard from uh, John Letty this morning that more than 50% of their traffic will be IPv6 within Comcast. That's even more significant than saying 50% of the users or endpoints being IPv6 ready. It's actually 50% of the traffic will be IPv6. Last year, this number was 1.7 billion. I thought that was big. This year, it's 2.87 billion. That's the number of unique IPv6 addresses seen in one week by Akamai. Now, of course, that's not 2.87 million in, it, unique endpoints. That's unique. IPv6 addresses, and since we're all IPv6 people here, we know IPv6 addresses change over time. It's called privacy addressing, and that's going to amplify this result, right? But the interesting point there is it's an indication that we've actually got, we've managed to get as far as we have, perhaps without a lot of NAT in the middle. Because if I'm changing my IPv6 address on the host and Akamai is seeing it, maybe I've actually got real live end to end. And that is the heart of at least one of the aspects of IPv6-centric networking. It's stepping back and thinking, oh, in IPv4, the value in the bits is just 32 bits, very valuable 32 bits because they're constrained, but it's just the destination address. The source address is lost. But in IPv6, it's not. So I've got 256 bits to play with in my global conduit of, of, of information that I'm building from end to end. And that end, remember, goes all the way down to the process, all the way down to the data. And then I can add to it with multiple prefixes per device, per endpoint. And I can even grow that with segment routing. So I end up with this new conduit of information that can really transform uh, networking one piece of the network at a time. So to sum up, within my six minutes, IPv6 à Paris. Ah. I'm losing my, merci beaucoup. Ça c'est mon français, mon français. The IPv6 World Congress is over. We had a great five years. But IPv6 in Paris is not. So. We're going to continue doing the work that we have been doing with the extra reinforcements of uh, Ecole Polytechnique, some of the other universities uh, uh, around Paris, and the, the students we've been hiring and engineers. We're building out this research lab to really look at what's next now that all this deployment has happened. We have much more work to do, and it's actually the most fun part. Uh, when you think about it. We've done the trudgery and difficult job of getting out there and getting IPv6 off the ground over the past five years. And this conference was a great uh, contributor to that. That's why I wanted Remy in the, in the room to uh, thank him. But the best part is still ahead. So thank you, Remy, for the past five years. And you'll watch the video for a really funny part. <laughs> Any questions? We have time indeed for one quick question and one quick reply. as I go backwards, just to give the joke to... Okay, in interest of time, do your joke with to Remy, because you are a club of friends, right, so... Yeah, I want to do the joke. Remember when I came to you back at that conference in 2015? Oh, and I said, hey, we should do a V6 conference, and you were like, we've already done that. And I was like, but, but it's going to happen. See? Anyhow, the time had come. And we opened the floodgates. We went mobile. 
And where in the world did you come up with that one? Because when I read that, it sounds like that. <laughs> Anyhow, it's been a great five years. Thank you for your support, because look what we've done. During those five years, we have increased IPv6 a hundred times, you know, two orders of magnitude. That's not a hundred times, two, a thousand times, something like that. Two orders of magnitude from 0.1% to over 10% on the internet. And thank you for that. Okay, thank you, Mark.